In this chapter, we're going to talk a little bit about catching fly balls. I'm sure a lot of you out there have watched a, a zillion videos about how to do uh, the proper footwork, where I catch the ball, the, the uh, 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 position of my arm when I, when I come here and throw, but we want to make sure that you understand that it's a process, okay? It is not, okay, do it three times and I got it. We want to create good habits, all right? If you do it right all the time, it's creating good habits. I had the pleasure of playing with a pretty good outfielder. His name is Ken Griffey Jr. And I watched him for two years and I couldn't figure out how he did it. Now I understand how he did it and why he did it. He looked like he caught the ball the same way all the time. He created good habits, probably as a youth and didn't really know it, but he created those habits. That's what we want to do. We always want to emulate the best players of the game, whether it's Albert Pujols, whether it's, it's uh, Nolan Ryan, you know, back in my day, uh, uh, guys, uh, Evan Longoria, uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, guys like that, tremendous players, super athletes, really fundamentally sound, good baseball players. We want to be like them. So why don't we do things like they do? Not necessarily trying to mimic their swings or mimic how they do it, but how they go about their business, how they go ab about preparing themselves to play the game. Now, un unfortunately, you're not there at three o'clock in the afternoon when they're out taking batting practice and, and working on their craft, but I guarantee you they're on the field every single day working out, preparing for the game, preparing for the competition every single day. The more you can do, the better. It doesn't matter whether it's a lot or little, let's practice correctly and prepare ourselves the best we can and create good habits. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about catching a fly ball in the outfield. Typically, I've heard different uh, 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 ways how to do it, and a lot of coaches are just happy that little Johnny caught the ball, okay? At some point in time, we evolve from that, and now it becomes time, okay? I would really, really like my outfielders to receive the ball with momentum going towards their target under control, and I can't state that enough, under control, all right? Catching the ball on my throwing side, consistently, on my throwing side. Now, how am I supposed to, or how can I do that? Well, I can do that by moving my feet. Footwork is huge, and, and getting back to Ken Griffey Jr., that's how he was able to, to do it. He had tremendous footwork. Most sports, footwork is super important. Baseball, exactly the same. If we have good footwork, we can accomplish a whole lot of stuff defensively. All right? So, I'm out in the outfield, fly ball hit to me. I have to know, when that ball is up in the air, what it looks like on the way down. Not just necessarily on the way up. Okay, I can, I can track it. But as it's coming closer to me, what does that ball look like on the way down? And I don't know whether you've ever thought of it like this before, but if I get a baseball, a drill that I like to use with younger players, even it would even be a, a, a major league outfielder. If they're having trouble with their footwork, I would use this particular drill. But T-baller all the way through, all the way through to major leagues, nothing is too elementary to work on. All right, remember that. Uh, as a player, sometimes you think, oh man, I already know that. Well, then it's a refresher, a refresher course. Some people may know it, some people may not. So what I like to do is I like to have my glove just like this on my shoulder. Now, depending on the age of the, the, the uh, player, I'm gonna either have a tennis ball or a regular baseball. And what I want to do is I want to flip the ball up in the air and catch it in my glove. 
Now in order to do this right and have my glove underneath the ball, I have to move my feet. So if I flip it up here, I have to move my feet. All right, and I start to get the understanding of where that ball, or what that ball looks like on the way down. On the way down, getting back to what I was talking about. What the ball looks like on the way down. And in order for that to ball to look the same all the time, if the ball's over here, I have to move my feet. And the ball is going to be in there. I don't care whether the ball is 10 feet up in the air or two miles up in the air, it's going to look the same on the way down if my footwork is consistent. All right, and this is a, a great way to, to teach a young player how to catch the ball. All right, and as, as we get better and better, now we move the glove out to here. Uh, there we go. We move the ball, the glove out to here. We don't want to catch balls like this, obviously, but we're going to move the ball out, out to here. Now, I want to make sure that I don't block out my eyes. I remember one day in, in uh, Philadelphia, Kurt Schilling was on the mound and fly ball hit to me. I was playing left field. I ran over, put my glove up too soon. I couldn't see the ball. I blocked my vision. And now I was at the point where there was a, a one second lull there, which seemed like an eternity, where I couldn't move the glove to see the ball because the ball might hit me in the face, but I couldn't see the ball. I didn't know whether I was gonna catch it. And it went in my glove and nobody in the stands knew, I was the only one that knew that I could not see the ball. And that is not a good feeling. We don't ever wanna be in that situation. So again, I want to make sure that I have clear vision to the baseball. All right, if I move my feet around, I'm going to see the ball in the same area all the time. That way, when I catch the ball, it's going to be on my throwing side. And remember, we talked about time. If I catch the ball on this side of my, my head, yes, I may catch the ball. But if there's a runner trying to tag, all right, now we're talking about time. Is it longer or shorter going from here to here and get rid of the ball or from here to here getting rid of the ball? I may have just saved myself uh, giving that base runner one extra step. Possibly the, dif uh, the difference between out and safe. Possibly. But better to error on that side than the other side. The odds of me throwing a guy out are greater. Again, making sure that our footwork is correct, our glove is in the right position, I'm getting momentum behind the baseball, I'm delivering the baseball to my cutoff man, in, in short and in proper fashion, uh, we're gonna see what happens here. We're gonna see how it looks a little bit speeded up. All right, I'm gonna catch a fly ball to my right. Well, actually, we're gonna start right at me, okay? Making sure that I catch the ball on, on the right side with some momentum coming towards the, the, my target. Right now, what we're doing is just trying to make sure that the ball is in the right position. I will incorporate my footwork here in a little bit, but I'm making sure that the ball is coming down in the same area all the time. There's nobody on, okay? I'm not in a big rush. There's no fire, all right? I'm making sure that I see the ball on this side of my body, on my throwing side, every time and in order to do that I have to move my feet all right there it is now I get into my crow hop and I come up and I hit my cutoff man consistently in the chest last one uh, that was easy okay now I'm in throwing position I let go of the ball 
Now when we talk about hitting the cutoff man consistently in the chest, if I have problems, if I'm throwing it too high consistently, lower your target. I'm trying to hit uh, my, my cutoff man in the chest and I throw it over his head all the time, well, maybe I have to try to hit him in the knee. That will bring my target down. If I'm short hopping them consistently, now I have to try, instead of trying to hit them in the chest, I'm gonna try to hit them in the head or just over their head. And what that does, it changes my, my sight line. It changes my release point, okay? We have to be able to make adjustments. Footwork is imperative. You have to move your feet. That's part of being an athlete. That's part of playing this game the way it's supposed to be played. Okay, again, making sure we know what that ball looks like on the way down is very important. To put my body in the right position consistently, I have to move my feet in order for that ball to be here all the time. Okay? Catching the ball with two hands. I've heard many, many different scenarios with this, with, uh, with little leaguers, with big leaguers. We want to catch the ball with two hands all the time. That is impossible. It's impossible to catch the ball with two hands all the time. We need to learn how to catch the ball with one hand, whether it's a forehand or a backhand. We have to be able to be able to run at full speed and catch the ball stretched out like this with one hand. If I try to catch every ball with two hands, now I'm going to be in bad positions physically to be able to make a play. I'm going to get tied up. So I need to practice that. A great drill for me is I will line up on one side or another and I will get a ball thrown to me. Starting on this side, I'm going to run this way and I'm going to work on fielding the ball with my backhand. So I'm going to run this way, one hand, all right, and now I'm going to go this way. I'll stop on, over here and as my teammates filter through, I'm going to stop over here and I'm going to take off running and I'm going to catch the ball one-handed. So that's, I start to understand how to be free and catch the ball with one hand. Stretch out and go forward. I'm going to run as fast as I can because I have to learn how to catch the ball on the run. Catching a fly ball hit right at me, no problem. Catching a line drive that's hitting the gap or down the line, that's another story. We have to learn how to catch a ball when we're running at full speed. Now there's different ways that we can learn how to be a better out in the outfield, okay? Drills are definitely one of them. Drills are definitely one of them. We have to learn how to run at full speed. It's very important, running at full speed and catching a ball. Too many times young players don't put in the, the right work. Why? Because they don't have the, the right information or correct information. Uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I do understand that. All right, there's a lot of different theories. But I would tell little Johnny who's in, in tyke or, or minor baseball the same thing as I would tell uh, Derek Jeter. Okay, and Derek Jeter is going to be in the Hall of Fame, and little Johnny may be in the Hall of Fame someday. I would tell them the exact same thing if they were trying to play the outfield. All right, and we go through the exact same process. A fly ball is the same here on a little league field, on a high school field, on a college field, on a pro field in the Yankee Stadium. A fly ball is a fly ball. Elements. We have to make sure we know what the wind's doing. Opponent, we have to make sure we know who the opponent is, the combination of, and this is part of the preparation part, 
Uh, we have to know the, the combination of our pitcher, their hitter, situation in the game. So many different things come into play. Sun, where the sun is. Uh, I see a lot of, of uh, uh, even professional outfielders have trouble with balls in the sun. Doesn't necessarily have to be that way. A fly ball that's hit in the sun can be easily caught if we change our angle. If we change our angle. If the sun is right in my face, I'm going to be playing center field, and that sun is right in my face, I go through my whole deal, I catch the, I'm, I'm looking at the ball coming down on this side, but the sun is there, okay? Sometimes we can't always, we have to be able to adjust and adapt. Sometimes we can't always catch the ball in the proper position. We have to make adjustments accordingly. If there's a sun ball, create a different angle to the ball. If the sun is right in my face here, there is nothing wrong with a routine fly ball hit to me, me creating a different angle so I can see the baseball. You will never lose a ball in the sun. You don't even need sunglasses. We block out the sun and we create a different angle. The ball now is coming here. Yeah, I'm going to catch it a little bit to the side this way but I'm not going to lose it in the sun. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. No, I'm going to create a different angle. Sun's right there. I block it out with my glove and I create a different angle and all of a sudden the ball is going to be in blue sky, out of the sun.